Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Canadian WASM info session. My name is Leah Bobrowski Vogt. I'm the Director of Canadian Admissions, and I have the pleasure of being your host for this evening. So welcome. I'm joined tonight by our, our Canadian, mostly Canadian speaker panel, which includes uh, Dr. Josh Webb, our Assistant Professor of Clinical Medicine, um, who is from Canada, um, as well as Dr. Laura Welke, our campus dean here at Wassum, who I will say is an honorary Canadian because uh, she's uh, just uh, over the border and uh, before joining, of course, uh, her, her her journey, of course, in medical education elsewhere. And then um, we're also joined by two of our incredible Canadian students. So welcome to uh, Jennifer Verobe, who is in her third, going on fourth semester here at Wassum, and uh, Grayson Mahani, who is in her second, going on third semester here at Wassum. I'd love to just turn it over uh, to you, Jen, to kick things off and have you tell us a bit about yourself, uh, where you're originally from, where you completed undergrad, and you know, why you felt Wassum was the right fit for you. I'm originally from Ottawa and in my third semester here, almost done, actually third semester, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> um, I went to uh, Carleton University and uh, did my undergrad in neuroscience. And I think, you know, I went through the Ontario um, whole system, tried to apply back in Canada twice. And I realized pretty quickly that no matter how good um, you could make your admissions it, there was no guarantee, really. And so rather than risk another cycle, I thought I would start looking at other options and, and take a risk on myself instead. So um, I did a lot of research and spoke to a lot of different schools. But really, once I spoke to Leah, I knew that Wassum was going to be my number one choice. She is not a salesperson, <laughs> which I encountered a lot when I spoke to a lot of other schools. She really seemed to um, want people who would fit with the school and with the learning style here. And um, aside from that, it was really the location for me, really close to, um, especially Eastern Canada, if you're in Ontario, really a quick uh, flight, at least to Florida and then to get back here. So those were definitely my biggest considerations and very glad I took that leap. Grayson, I mean, yourself, I know you came directly out of, uh, out of undergrad and started with us. So I'd love for you to share a little bit about yourself as well. As Leah said, my name is Grayson. I'm from St. Catharines, Ontario. And for me, I actually did two years down in the States playing just like in the NCAA circuit playing hockey. And then I transferred back to Waterloo where I finished with honors biology with specialization in chemistry. And then kind of right out, like I knew in my like final year at Waterloo that I wanted to go med school, go that route. So did the MCAT, kind of looked at all the options. My mom's a nurse, so I knew kind of like IMG was an option already starting there and then applied. I went, I even applied nursing, just trying to think of like how I could go about getting like my medical degree. And it just kind of worked out that my dad was looking like just around, he's like quick flights close, close to like the States. So just easy peasy <laughs> places and Wassum came up and my parents actually came down and toured first. They said like, this seems like legit. Let's, let's bring Grace down. So then we toured, we had like a really great experience. Just the tour, love the Island. It is, it's like surprisingly just how many Canadians are on the Island in our buildings. We were talking about it. It's like every other person you're like, Oh, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Ottawa. Oh, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Toronto. So that was a really nice touch, but it just like Wassum just like fit my, like my goals the most. It was not like, not the quickest, but it's, or it was kind of the quickest option in this sense, but it got me to my goal. I really loved like the Island. I was really excited about the school and I was like startup school. I wasn't too worried about it because like I had gone to Kings where it was a first year program as well for hockey. So it's, it was just like, I was open to it. It's exciting. And I haven't like regretted it once since. Dr. Webb, I, I know you know a thing or two about medical education, of course, as a, a an academic clinician and member of our faculty, but you were once upon a time ago in Jennifer and Grayson's shoes as well, studying medicine in the Caribbean. So I'd love for you to give us a snapshot of your background as well. And, you know, maybe what you feel sets Wassum apart from a lot of other international medical schools. I did my undergrad at Dalhousie in Halifax, uh, where I grew up and uh, wrote the MCATs and, and applied. And as most Canadians know, it's it's a, you know, it's a bit of a mixed bag to, to get matched to a Canadian school or to, to get a uh, a uh, medical school seat uh, in Canada. It's very, very competitive. And it can often seem that there's no rhyme or reason to who gets in and who doesn't or who gets in an interview and who doesn't. 
Um, and when I uh, d- didn't get accepted at a Canadian school, I applied to the Caribbean because I had known um, a couple of uh, friends that had gone that route and made their way back. I did my uh, clerkship um, kind of in the States and then did my electives in Canada and applied to a residency uh, at UBC and got matched to my first pick, which was fantastic. And I did a uh, role in remote family medicine at uh, University of British Columbia. And uh, then kind of always had the the intention of coming back to the Caribbean and then spending some time down here teaching. And I uh, found out about this, this amazing new school that uh, had a new style of education that were really rebuilding kind of Caribbean medical education from the ground up, um, mm-hmm. fixing a lot of the uh, the old, old ways of having, you know, eight to five classes and, and 200 PowerPoint slides to really focusing on building strong clinicians, which I think will really serve Canadian students when they want to get back into Canada or they want to get back into the U.S. and do a, do a residency there. I think I'm going to turn it over to you uh, again, Jen. Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about, you know, what that flipped classroom type of um, active learning approach we offer here at Wasserman, you know, what a typical day looks like for you. Actually, I think I'm opposite of Grayson right now with my schedule. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm lucky enough to start in the afternoons. (laughs) So um, most of our class time is in the afternoon, but we have a lot of um, what we call pre-work. So the idea is that we get a lot of exposure to what we're going to be learning that day or that week ahead of time. So you come into the class with Um, a little more knowledge than just sort of sitting and waiting to be taught the material. And then we work through a lot of um, question style and case style uh, stuff. So one of the great things actually is that most sessions are just led by one faculty member, but we have several uh, faculty members often present. So you might have somebody who's maybe a physiology expert, somebody else who's more of a clinician, and they all sort of work together to integrate the material. Um, It was you know, very different from what I was used to as far as sort of, um, you know, classical ways of being taught. But I learned really quickly that even just having that sort of pre, um, the pre-work really, it really helps you to engage with what's going on and know um, a little bit ahead of time rather than just kind of, you know, all this information being thrown at you. And it gives us a lot more time to really study, self-study and really sort of try to master the material um, rather than being in class, like like you said, from eight to five. Grayson, I'd love for you to touch on, you know, the the learning environment, the the resources that are available to you uh, and students, um, you know, in terms of that support system and, you know, how accessible are faculty to you? That's one thing that I really, really enjoy at Wassum is just how open they are to like changes in the curriculum. Like if we say something like, hey, we really didn't understand that. Can we get a CAS session, which is just like, an extra hour or something to go through. Professors are open to it. We have our flexible tutorial. So every quiz on Monday, on Tuesday, we go through the questions that kind of like most were wrong. Like what, where was that disconnect? How can like our professors help us? We have like our professor's office hours are amazing. You can walk in the building and even if they don't have office hours, if you just kind of pop your head in and you're like, hello, they're like, yes, 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 come. And like, so I, that that's really good. And then we also just kind of like, In addition to like actual in contact like resources, we have Amboss and we have, which is kind of like a U world, a question bank, extra, an extra resource of just straight information. And that we're like so, like I am, I'm in love with Amboss. I use it every day. And then I'm trying to think what other resources we have. Osmosis. Oh, and osmosis. Osmosis is like Jen said, it's where most of our pre-work videos come from. And then uh, that also gives us the option to see a lot more step one questions and flashcards. And then just like seeing the videos in a way that makes sense. And it's not just straight information. It's very like accessible in the sense of how you're learning it. How are our students really evaluated, uh, you know, in their their daily activities or exams? And um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. We are really privileged um, here at Wassum in that we have access. We've been authorized to utilize the National Board of Medical Examiners, the MBME. Um, These are the individuals who actually write um, the step one, step two, step three examinations for the United States Medical Licensing licensing Exam. So we have the privilege, we're authorized to use their question bank. Um, And there's probably 10,000 questions in there that are all step one type, either retired questions or other. So from your very first semester, we blue, the faculty get together and we call it blueprinting. And so we'll blueprint 
what we call our summative exam one or two or three or what have you. So the faculty can choose the questions so they're applicable to the unit. Let's say you're doing cardiovascular or respiratory or renal or so on, and they'll blueprint that exam. And so from the student's very first exam, they're learning how to read and decipher and, and I say conquer these step one questions. And, and so there, it's really valid and it, it's really um, appropriate to, to what they need to do at the end of the pre-clerkship is pass that step one. Um, so I just think it's fantastic. And each semester they take four of these MVME style um, summative examination. So by the time they're through fourth semester, they've done 16 of these exams. And so although it can be sort of intim intimidating at first, I think it's just by the time they get to step one, it's going to be like, oh, I've been doing this. I've been doing this for 20 months and I'm used to this. And so we really, we really drive home that working with questions and, and those and the, the summative exams. And then in fifth semester, we have it built in, if I may continue. Um, for fifth semester, they'll do four, four semesters of really organ system units. And then fifth semester we've built in is pretty much a, a really high intensity review course, multi-system multi -system, um, um, integration and, and review. And, and at that point, they're gonna take what's called the CBSE, which is the Con Comprehensive Basic Science Examination. And this is also an MBME exam. And they're gonna do it not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. So, and the, the CBSE, the comp, what they call it is a is a really really strong predictor of step one performance. So we are just really feeling confident about getting from the very first exam, getting students really really trained on answering these questions so that they're ready to to really destroy that step one exam at the end. Jennifer, you uh, you actually joined us in a May term, so maybe I'd love to start there. What were some of the things that attracted you specifically to start in May? You know, I think it just sort of worked out that way. I I think I was accepted maybe early December, um, and January just seemed way too quick. I felt like I couldn't sort of wrap up everything at home and be ready um, to come down for January. Um, mm -hmm. Looking back on it, I, the May start was great. I, I'm not sure how that'll play out in the end. I know you say uh, told me at the time, actually, which I understand now there'll be a nice little break at exam step one, mm -hmm. time, which will work out well. Um, mm -hmm. But if I could have started earlier, I feel like I should have. <laughs> Grayson, had you applied? Um, I know a lot of Canadian students apply in Canada as well as the U.S. Had you applied to both? I did apply I'm trying to think actually. No, I don't think I applied to Canadian med schools. I kind of, I won't lie. I was a little worried about my MCAT score. And then I had a lot of friends that were also applying and they're like, I'm getting rejected. I'm getting rejected. And I was like, <laughs> okay, like <laughs> hold. So I was, that's why I kind of looked at more of the non-traditional route of like staying in Canada. Um, and like I said before, I'd been in the States. So like being open to going to other places. So no, I actually, I didn't. And then when I applied to Wassum, they also tried to get me to join um, in the May cohort, and I had to be like, no, 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 no. I have like I have a job. I have to go for it. Like I have to for the summer for work. But I don't. Yeah, I'm like, and then I'm kind of the opposite. I love. I'm so excited that I started in September. Started that like traditional the September start new like school everything at the same time. But I'm a creature of habit. So if I were to suddenly switch and I'm at school in May, I'd be like, no, I'm on I'm on vacation. It's it's summer right now. Darker Webb, how great is it to have? a little bit more of a cushion, uh, you know, if you were to start a little bit sooner. It would definitely open up a lot of doors for students to um, kind of really, especially in Canada, if you want to go, go back through the, the resident, uh, through CARMS, the residency matching um, service, you know, having the ability to do electives or, or, or rotations in those those areas that are um, really friendly to IMGs, that are really looking to um, take CSAs, Canadian students uh, who studied abroad, um, being able to have that time because maybe you might need an extra two weeks to, to have an elective lineup or, or something along those lines um, that just having that buffer will really uh, open up doors, allow you to make relationships, allow, allow you to meet program directors and residency directors and, you know, help get your foot back in the, in the door in Canada for sure. Jen, do you feel that you're getting a lot of exposure to, you know, clinical patients, whether it's in the sim lab or elsewhere that, 
um, you know, is really going to prepare you when you're in front of actual patients. We were exposed to that literally from the first week. Um, and every single week we have um, clinical, it can be uh, just work, work, work with um, like physical examination skills, as well as with the sim dummies and all that kind of stuff. Um, and this semester, even we were um, given the opportunity to go out to a clinic on the island and spend some time shadowing a doctor and even interviewing some real patients. So really, you know, I feel like I just started in this journey and have had a lot of have had a lot of opportunities actually to wow. really work with real patients. And as far as I understand, that's not really how most um, med schools are designed. A lot of people don't see any kind of patient action, I think. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. We offer full track locations here at Wassum. So third year, you can expect to do all of your clinical clerkships in a single geographical location. How important is that, Dr. Webb, when you are doing your clinicals that you don't have to bounce around from, you know, one site to the next? Having to go somewhere for a month and somewhere else for a month and and either rent cars or drives, you know, to be able to get yourself settled and really focus on your clinical rotations is is so key. Uh, It's so important. Then then you can really shine and not have to be worried about, you know, finding a a, a short-term rental or a short-term apartment uh, in, in a variety of places. Dr. Webb, did you happen to do any Canadian electives during your med school journey? I did. I did. Uh, I spent uh, six weeks in, in Newfoundland doing orthopedic surgery. I did family medicine and uh, radiology electives uh, at Dalhousie. I did a rural family medicine uh, rotation with um, University of Saskatchewan in uh, in Laurent in northern Saskatchewan. So I had a, had a, had a good mix of electives, good mix of experience, which which was fantastic. Allowed me to le- meet a lot of, uh, of physicians, and I think that really helps kind of strengthen my resume to show that I wanted to come back to Canada and I, and I wanted to practice. But if you're participating in the Canadian residency match, there are some additional steps that you must take, of course, to participate in the CARMS R1 match for those entry level um, positions. So one of which being the Medical Council of Canada qualifying exam, the same exam that Canadian med students also take. And a second one, which is the NAC OSCE, which is an objective structured clinical exam. Both exams are administered through the Medical Council of Canada. How you feel like WASM in general will really prepare students to do well on those examinations? I'm heavily involved in the patient-centered care uh, curriculum here at Wassum, and that's um, clinical skills, it's interview skills, it's uh, and then being able to put it together and make uh, come up with a diagnosis or a treatment. And we start literally in the first semester. So when you feel like you don't know anything, we're, we're making you learn, integrate, and apply to a patient. And we do that all five semesters here. Uh, so when you get to the, the opportunity to, to do the NAC OSCE, You'll be you'll, you'll have done so many OSCEs. You'll have had all of those experiences. Uh, whereas when we're on where I trained in the Caribbean, we had you know two weeks of that uh, in our fourth semester, and that was about it. So the NACA OSCE was definitely uh, nail biting and a lot of individual preparation, and kind of left up left on my own to prepare for it. But we're really getting our students set because that is a very competitive exam and it's a very difficult exam. And then our preparations for the USMLE will definitely uh, prepare them well for the uh, MCC QE uh, exam as well. So, you know, they're going to have a lot of opportunity to go through vignettes, do timed exams, really get used to that that typical setting. And then we'll we'll have you well sorted for your your OSCEs and for your clinical rotations. Dr. Webb, did you participate in both the NRMP and CARMS or just one or just just CARMS or yeah, what did that look like for you? I was very heavily focused on on getting back into into Canada and practicing in Canada. So I I only applied to, to CARMS that year. And then I would decided that if, if I didn't match that year, I, w- I would apply to the States as well as maybe uh, the UK and Australia. A lot of my classmates did uh, apply to the, uh, because you have the US match, from what I recall, happens before the Canadian match. Um, and I was pretty focused on the Canadian match, but I had a lot of my colleagues um, get residency uh, match to the US programs. And they they had the same mentality of, you know, I really want to go back to Canada. I really, really want to go back to Canada. And now, you know, fast forward, to, you know, well over a decade later, I've got friends that are practicing in New York City, in Hawaii, down in in uh, North Virginia. I've got friends that are working in Florida, and you know they they got into those programs and they really kind of just built a life there and decided they wanted to stay. Mm-hmm. And then I worked with a lot of uh, physicians that had gone and trained in the U.S., worked a few years there and came back to Canada. Or and I worked with a few IMGs that had gone to uh, Australia and the U.K. to do their um, uh, residency. 
did the residency training, worked there for a few years, and then came back to Canada. So there's there really is, you know, once you once you have a training program, once you're trained, the option to come back to Canada is always there. But people get get to, to somewhere else and, and realize that maybe the grass is is a bit greener on the other side of the fence. But when they start to go over and decide they want, you know, set, practicing in Hawaii sounds pretty good to me. How easy was it for you to apply to Wassum there, Grayson? Super easy. I was, mm -hmm. I had like kind of my like essays already written and like my scores and it was just drag, drop, drag, drop, <laughs> sit through and then kind of like fingers crossed, hope like I get an interview, interview, hope I interview well and then just go from there. But I at least personally found it very easy, like just having, and it was like, it was not very long at all either. I found it online. Click, click, click. <laughs> How were you supported in that transition moving from Canada to the Bahamas? So for me, like my major support is my like family. So my parents, like, as I said before, like they came down and toured Wassum. Like, well, they came, they went on a Freeport vacation and then they just so <laughs> happened to drive by the school, just do a little peek, had like on the windows and stuff. So they did that. And then I think I interviewed and everything and we found out I was being accepted. And then when I had been accepted, my parents said, no, like, okay, you have to see the school now. You have to be on the island, see if this is something you can do. And I think that was also like a major point for me is like coming down and touring was because I was able to see like, okay, I can see pictures, I can visualize, but like actually driving, like seeing if I'm going to have like where my apartments are going to be. Can I make this drive? Do I need a car? Am I going to do a scooter? That kind of option. So, but then moving in here, the transition, it was like fairly fairly easy. My siblings came down for a little vacation to help move me in again. And then uh, like the, oh, not open house, but the orientation we had, like, they were kind of like, okay, see you later. And then I just see them every break. I go home for breaks and then, but, and then like family FaceTimes every Sunday night. So mm -hmm. it's been really good to have like that support system, but the transition like Wassum makes it also very easy. We have the shuttle for the first couple weeks of school trying to figure out if I'm getting a car or not. We have all the resources on our canvas that kind of like offer us like, okay, I don't know where this is. Is that something that the school's already looked into? And then there's also the um, WhatsApp group for like the entire island, the like Grand Bahama one, where you could honestly throw a question and then anybody on the island can respond back and be like, oh no, you just got to reach out to this person. And it's very, wow. very helpful. <laughs> More recently, we've actually started our, uh, our admitted student cruises, these are trips to come see the campus before you formally start here at Wassum. So we just hosted our very first one, I believe it was last week or yeah, last week, I think. And uh, our next one taking place uh, towards the end of March. So we will be hosting the admitted student trips periodically as well. Uh, Dr. Welke, do you want to talk a little bit about, uh, about the admitted student trips? We're calling them Come See Wassum. Um, we had our first trip last Wednesday on the 15th. And um, I guess once you reach Freeport, once you reach Freeport, um, we have the whole day planned out. Uh, they go, they'll, the bus comes and we take them, take everyone on a tour of um, sort of an area tour of Freeport. So they get to see the marketplace and um, a sample of, here we go, um, <laughs> a sample of grocery shopping. They, we take them to a few um, housing venues. So they can see what apartments or houses look like here. Um, take them by the beaches, some of the, the hot spots here that everyone is on the bus. Um, and then, then they come to campus. I guess this is where they're, they're touring some of the, the apartment complexes and housing options. That's where that's where oh, yeah. that's where <laughs> that's where So um, and after that, then they they come to to campus and we have here we go. We're on campus. We we break everyone off and we do campus tours. They will tour the clinical space, the clinical skills simulation. Here they are right where we are right now, actually, in the simulation um, space and center. Take them through the physical exam rooms and um, the student leisure space, the classrooms, a complete full tour. They have lunch with current students. We call it a chat and chew, so they can have an opportunity to ask questions of current students. This is our current leisure space. Um, here's us introducing some of our, our leadership and faculty. 
And so all of the admitted students have a, and their families have a chance to observe a classroom session. Here's Dr. Selfridge in the classroom um, doing sort of a, a sample type session. And here we are back in, in simulation, uh, sort of sample simulation uh, and clinical activity. So it was a it was, I think it was a great day. I think it was really successful. I think it was a lot of fun. I don't know if either of you were involved, um, but the, it was just, it was great. I know Josh, you were there, Dr. Webb, you were there. And, and then at four o'clock, everyone goes back and they get back on, on the boat and they go over back to Florida and off they go. So it just works out really well to have, to have everyone come and visit because I really think that interaction on campus, seeing campus interacting with current students faculty, staff really, really brings it all together. What was the most surprising thing to you about, you know, joining WASM or, you know, just even studying medicine outside of the country? What was something that was really surprising to you, Jen? Island time is a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> it took some getting used to, you know, um, being that we're in medical school and you have a million things to do every single day. You definitely mm -hmm. have to really learn to relax when you go out and just, you know, if you want a coffee, Mm -hmm. You know, take your time. <laughs> it's going to take a few minutes, <laughs> a few minutes. And you know, instead of it, it was frustrating in the beginning, I'll admit. But now I've learned to really sort of relax and enjoy it, and and take those little breaks. Um, be, become a part of the island rather than yeah. you know, try to fight it. Medical school is rigorous no matter where you go, and uh, you know, but there you know is some downtime, of course. And so, what are some of the things that you've really you know enjoyed doing on that downtime and in that downtime? My schedule, like like Jen said, I'm on the opposite schedule. So classes for me are usually eight till noon, and then that leaves like the afternoon, my evening open. So I find like usually I go to the gym right away. I did start at like the CrossFit and then I've moved to one of the like smaller gyms that's just slightly closer to my place. So it's just, I couldn't turn that up or turn that, say no to that. And then, on, and then just taking like advantage of where I am in my location is like my friend Robin and I will do like little beach walks for the sunset. I'll be like, are you busy? Like, let's, so we do little walks and then just kind of getting out and it's for me, it's a lot of getting out, like going to see the national park or doing just like the little beach areas, banana Bay, just, just getting out. Honestly, I'm probably the worst person for like other stuff, but <laughs> I try and get outside a lot or like make an appearance or like help out with the school if they're doing events. Like yeah. I know you were just part of the mile run, Rob and I tie like a students in my cohort. We did the uh, Independence Day. So we did the five mile walk and then just trying to show, like put Wasm out there on the island show that we're really happy to be there and just make those connections. We look forward to welcoming your application really soon and uh, want to thank you again for joining us this evening.